Greetings in Jesus Christ's name. The purpose of this video is to present the one and only Bible way to be baptized in water. There are many different ways groups choose to baptize believers, such as Father, Son, Holy Ghost, and Jesus only, but these two specific examples do not take into account all the scriptures in the Bible about baptism, which makes them incomplete and inaccurate. We want to humbly present what all the Bible teaches about being baptized in water. We will show that we must baptize believers, which means completely immersing them under water as we call upon the literal name of the Lord Jesus Christ. This is a crucial subject as we believe the Bible proves that nearly one billion believers today have been baptized incorrectly. This estimate might seem shocking to some, but Revelation chapter 12 verse 9 said that Satan would deceive the whole world from the truth, and Jesus said those that find the true way will be few, and the way is narrow, according to Matthew 7, 14. Now let's look at five sections on the subject of water baptism, sola scriptura, by scripture alone. Believers in Jesus Christ should be fully immersed or buried in water when being baptized. The Greek word for baptize literally means immerse or submerge. Four scriptures from the Bible show how believers went down into the water, had much water there, and were buried in water at the moment of being baptized. Full immersion in water has Bible evidence. On the other hand, sprinkling at baptism has no Bible evidence, zero examples. So it cannot be accepted by the believers because Jesus said every word is established in the mouth of two or three witnesses. By scripture alone, there are only seven times the New Testament mentions sprinkling and none of them relate to baptism. Without a doubt, full immersion in water is the only method the Bible gives for being baptized. The practices of sprinkling at baptism and also baptizing infants did not come from the Bible, so it must have came from man and therefore it is a tradition of man that makes the word of God of none effect according to Jesus in Matthew chapter 15 verse 6. By scripture alone, we encourage you to be fully immersed in water at your baptism or your rebaptism. The Bible supports rebaptism in cases where believers were unaware of the baptism for the gift of the Holy Ghost according to Acts 19, 1 through 5. Now that we've seen how the Bible only supports full immersion in water, we want to answer the question, what name do we call upon at baptism? As stated earlier, most believers are baptized calling upon the Father, Son, Holy Ghost, or the name of Jesus only. These two examples, though, do not take the entire book of Acts into account, and so they are incomplete and inaccurate. By scripture alone, believers should call upon the name of the Lord Jesus Christ when being baptized. The book of Acts has 10 recorded baptisms. Five of them state the name that was called upon. Let's look at this simple table to understand how God wants you and I to be baptized. As we can all see, Jesus commanded his disciples to baptize in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Ghost in Matthew 28, 19, before his ascension to heaven. According to Acts 1, 3, and 2, 1, 10 days after Jesus gave this command, St. Peter commanded that baptism be carried out in the name of Jesus Christ on the day of Pentecost. Not long after that, St. Philip commanded believers to be baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. St. Peter was again recorded baptizing in the name of the Lord in Acts 10.48. Acts 19.5 shows that St. Paul baptized the Ephesians in the name of the Lord Jesus. Last, St. Paul testified to Agrippa in Acts 22.16 that he was baptized in the name of the Lord. Keep in mind that there is not one scripture in the Bible that shows the apostles baptizing using the words Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. This is because the apostles understood Jesus' words and Matthew 28, 19. Jesus' disciples knew that the words Father, Son, and Holy Ghost were not literal names, but were simply titles of the name of the one true God. The literal name of God is the Lord Jesus Christ. Just as a man like myself can have a literal name, yet with many titles. My titles include father, son, brother, uncle, husband, 
teacher, pastor, and friend to name a few. But my literal name is Jesse Ray Smith, and I cannot sign my checks using the titles, but I must sign my checks using the power of my literal name because that identifies my person, who I am. So it is with God. He has many titles, such as Father, Son, Holy Ghost, Rose of Sharon, Lily of the Valley, Everlasting Father, Jehovah Jireh, and so forth. But the name of God that has power to perform miracles and cast out demons and do every good work is the literal name of God, the Lord Jesus Christ. Notice that in Matthew 28, 19, Jesus said to baptize in the name, not names, plural, of the Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. This is very important to note that the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Ghost is singular and not plural. Just as the promises were made to Abraham's seed, singular, and not seeds, plural, so Jesus said to baptize in the singular name, not names, of the Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. This further proves that the name of Jesus Christ is the one singular name of God, because St. Peter, St. Paul, and St. Philip all baptized using the singular name of the Lord Jesus Christ. By Scripture alone, we can clearly see that the early apostles knew that the Lord Jesus Christ was the one and only name to be called upon when baptizing. Matthew 28:19 is one of the most misunderstood scriptures in the Bible today. Some teach that St. Peter, Philip, and Paul broke Jesus' command in Matthew 28:19 by not saying the words Father, Son, and Holy Ghost when baptizing in the book of Acts. Others have even taught that we should obey Jesus in Matthew 28:19 and reject the book of Acts because they believe the early apostles contradicted Jesus' command. How sad to think that some would reject parts of the Bible and think that Jesus' own apostles would contradict his teaching. The truth is that there is no contradiction, but there is a revelation. Jesus opened their understanding in Luke 24:45 before his ascension so they would understand the mystery of Matthew 28:19. The Father, Son, and Holy Ghost are all manifest in one body. That body has one name, the Lord Jesus Christ. The Lord Jesus Christ is the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. Let's look at this visual to help us better understand how the Father, Son, and Holy Ghost were all manifested in one body, the body of the Lord Jesus Christ. Most people agree that the Godhead consists of the Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. Most will also agree that the Son became flesh and came down from heaven and was manifested on the earth. But many people do not quite understand that all of the Godhead dwell in Jesus. Colossians 1.19 says it pleased the Father that in Him should all fullness dwell. Colossians 2.9 says, For in Him dwelleth all the fullness of the Godhead bodily. All the fullness of the Godhead must include the Father and Holy Ghost. According to Jesus Himself, the fullness of the Father lived in His body. John 14.10 the Father in me, the Father that dwells in me, he doeth the works. Without a doubt, the Father dwelt in the body of Jesus Christ. The Bible also teaches how the Holy Ghost dwelt in the body of Christ. John chapter 1 verses 32 and 33. The Spirit abode on him and the Spirit remaining on him. John chapter 3 verse 34. God giveth the Spirit unto him. Acts 10 verse 38. God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and with power. Based upon the words of Jesus himself, the Father, Son, and Holy Ghost were all declared or manifested through his bodily presence on earth. So then there is one name of the Godhead, the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. We believe scripture teaches that Jesus Christ is the name above all names. While it is true our God is a Father, Son, and Holy Ghost, the Bible tells us there is one name we are saved by in Acts 4.12. That one name is the name above all names, according to Philippians 2.9. It is the name of Jesus Christ. It is the family name of the believers, according to Ephesians 3.15. Demons were and still are cast out in the literal name of Jesus Christ, according to Acts 16, 18. 
Miracles were and still are done in the literal name of Jesus Christ, according to Acts 3.6. Please understand that no miracle was ever performed in the titles Father, Son, Holy Ghost in the Bible, proving that Father, Son, Holy Ghost is not the literal name of God. And so baptism must be carried out in the literal name of Jesus Christ, because the Bible also says that baptism is to be performed in the name of the one who was crucified according to 1 Corinthians 1.13. The Father and the Holy Ghost were not crucified for you, for Jesus said God is a spirit in John 4.24, and the word ghost means spirit, and spirits do not have flesh and blood. But God's Son, whose name was and is Jesus Christ, did die on the cross for our sins, and so it is in His name that we must be buried in water. This has to be the truth because in the book of Acts, every baptism was performed using the literal name of Jesus Christ, or Lord Jesus, or Lord. Whatever we do in word or deed, including miracles, baptizing, and casting out evil spirits, we are to do all in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, according to Colossians 3.17. So where did this misinterpretation and misunderstanding of Matthew 28:19 come from? History shows that near the end of the first century, believers started baptizing using the liturgy formula, which only uses one scripture, Matthew 28:19. This was a gross error. Doctrine cannot be built upon one scripture, according to Isaiah 28 verses 9 through 10, and 2 Corinthians 13 verse 1. You cannot teach baptism by Matthew 28:19 alone. You must include the book of Acts, for that is the record of how Jesus' apostles interpreted his words in Matthew 28:19. Historically, scholars recognize two different baptisms. The first is the apostolic baptism, and the second is the liturgy baptism. We have 14 historical references, all saying the same thing. The first baptism, the apostolic baptism, was carried out only using the name of Jesus Christ. Just as the Bible shows, there are five baptisms in the book of Acts using the apostolic baptism. Notice that none of the Bible baptisms are performed using the liturgy baptism of Father, Son, Holy Ghost. The modern baptism of today, called the liturgy baptism, using Father, Son, and Holy Ghost, began sometime near the end or beginning of the first century and is a misunderstanding of the words of Jesus and thus is a false baptism according to the Bible and history. Most honest-hearted Christians are most likely unaware of these truths because they have not heard it preached. That is why we have such a burden to get the truth out to Christians for the truth on water baptism and every other Bible subject will set them free. Here's another look at the history of the two different baptisms using a baptism timeline from 33 AD to 100 AD. The first and original baptism is called the Apostolic Baptism. This is the true baptism formula and is carried out in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. On the day of Pentecost around 33 AD, St. Peter said in Acts 2.38 that baptism was in the name of Jesus Christ. Approximately 26 years later after St. Peter baptized believers, around 59 AD, St. Paul was recorded as baptizing believers in the name of the Lord Jesus in Acts 19.5. So we see Peter and Paul were baptizing the same way, 30 years apart from one another, proving that the Lord Jesus Christ is the one name of the Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. Approximately 40 years after St. Paul, around the end of the first century, history tells us the liturgy baptism began, which is a false baptism formula, which was used by non-apostles, and there are no scriptures in the book of Acts of anyone baptizing using the words Father, Son, Holy Ghost. Notice the apostles never used the liturgy baptism of calling upon the titles of Father, Son, and Holy Ghost, but rather the apostles of Jesus called upon Jesus' name, the Lord Jesus Christ. So the Bible and history both prove that everyone in the early church was baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. No one was baptized using the words Father, Son, and Holy Ghost until the end of the first century. So it took nearly 70 years after the apostolic baptism for the false baptism using titles was introduced. We hope you'll be baptized in the only apostolic and Bible-based way calling upon the name of the Lord Jesus Christ.
in conclusion, we pray that you will consider these truths and act upon them if you believe in Jesus Christ with all of your heart, and if you want to be baptized or rebaptized sola scriptura by scripture alone. Being baptized correctly is of utmost importance, for when you are baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, you have the promise to receive the gift of the Holy Ghost according to Acts 2, 38 and 39. The born again experience is the same as the baptism of the Holy Ghost, and it is the seal of God upon your soul unto the day of your redemption, according to Ephesians 4.30. Being born again allows you to see and enter the kingdom of God, according to John 3, verses 3 and 5, and it makes you one of His own, according to Romans 8.9. If you would like more Bible teaching about water baptism in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, or if you'd like to be baptized or rebaptized in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, please contact us. God bless you, and may Jesus Christ be the desire of your heart.